So it's really interesting to show you what illustration of what can be done with not very much, but with a lot of uh, effort and uh, community volunteers, of which I know that you're all uh, a part of. So, uh, Care and Do Community for Child Care. I hope most people know where Care and Do is. It's just right at the head of Block 9. Um, there's a picture. You can see where uh, you go along the lock side at the head of Block 5, just around from the Oyster Bar, and next to my and various other businesses. So, we're well located in an area with a, within about a 30 mile radius. We have uh, several other uh, towns and villages in the area of Ocolhead. Um, but what we didn't have, we never had, was any child care facilities within that area at all, really, apart from the uh, child minders who kind of came and went. Um, Kandu is a community, it's very small, it's only about 180 resident population. Um, but we had had a major project in running up to the Millennium Hall project when we renovated our village hall. And that was really the first major fundraising project that the community had entered into. Um, and to be honest, we didn't have a development plan or anything like that. But because we're a very small community, we were even smaller at that time, um, there wasn't really the need because we had enough communication going between ourselves to, to make that work. Um, and the, the hall was renovated from a, from a crumbling Victorian hall to a uh, state-of-the-art uh, modern hall. Um, and really on the back of that success, I think the community felt able to take on other projects. So the childcare was one that then came into uh, existence really through several of us individuals who were spending a lot of time driving around the country trying to get rid of our children uh, <laughs> so that we could go to work. Um, and realising you know, it wasn't good for us, it wasn't good for the cars, it wasn't good for the kids, so you know, surely we could do something better. It took us five years to get the centre opened. It was not a fast process. Um, but we, we did manage to get it opened, and we went to the hall and said, you know, we want to do this, we don't know if it's going to work, but let's start it off in the hall, and um, then we'll take it from there. Uh, so that was where we did it, it opened in 2005, um, and we're still there, but more of that later on. Um, so in terms of funding, we, re we have received assistance from the uh, two wind farm, wind farm trust that operate in our area. Not so much in the early years, but in, in the later years. So that's the Clapham Flats Trust and the Ansuni Trust. Uh, we've also received funding from the council, from the big lottery, from local businesses, fundraising, probably like you all involved in fundraising, really anywhere we could get it, we would take it. Um, a childcare facility in a rural area like this is uh, probably never going to be able to fund itself entirely on the fees from the childcare. There just simply aren't enough babies. You know, again, we, we need more babies, but. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the ones that are there shouldn't have the childcare facilities that they deserve and that their families can benefit from. So the funders, you know, that's always been our argument with the funders and uh, to give them their due, they've uh, accepted that. Um, so what do we do with the funding? The main cost for us is salaries. And that's quite often a difficult thing to fund through things like the lottery, etc. who are looking for fixed term projects. People don't want to, don't want to it's, it's not easy, but you can get funded in capital projects for getting funded for revenue. So that's why the Wind Farm Trust have been particularly helpful for us because they don't have the, uh, as, as we've heard, you know, particular rules about what they can and can't, can't fund. So helping with the salaries, helping out with the salaries has been a, a big plus for us. Um, the other things that we obviously funding salaries is our main. Uh, but also the other funding is for the rents for the hall um, and other services, but most of the money we spend is actually going back into the communities that we live in. So the people, obviously the people we're paying, the community hall is benefiting through the rents, um, so you know, the money is staying within the community, it's not really going outside the community. Um, so I was asked to talk about the application process and uh, why we've succeeded. This is a picture of a treasure hunt, so I thought that was an appropriate for hunting, hunt, hunting for treasure. Um, so I think what, one of the... Uh, we've, we focus very much on what we need, but you know, when we're a small project, it's not difficult for people to get their heads around why, why we need the money, so that, that's, a, that's a winning situation. We very much believe in, in talking to people face to face, 
I think we found that very helpful in, in getting funds, is so to talk to funders, to pick up the phone, you know, just don't, don't rely just on plugging in an email and, and hoping that's going to get it. If you can actually get to talk to people, and I have to say, when we applied for our serious Russian foundation, people were very good at that. They were very proactive at coming in and talking to us, and that, and that made a big difference to us. And it's actually it's nice to talk to people about what you're doing and get some encouragement and get some feedback. Um, so that, I would recommend that as a, a, a course of action. And also explaining the wider benefits, although we are a childcare facility, the wider benefits of what we do stretch right across our community and the local businesses within our community. Um, and we don't have a school in Cairn too because it closed down in, in the uh, uh, early 70s or so. And uh, so there are, the, the children all have to go out of the to get to primary school. So having a child focus centre within the community is, is a great asset in itself, uh, let alone the benefits to people being able to work in the local businesses and um, you know, the, all the other services that we put in. Um, we, get the, we get a lot of support locally. Again, businesses are important. Kendu is probably has more businesses per capita than most of the other areas in our bar, even its size. So we, we spend a lot of time talking to them and making sure that they're supporting us and um, know what we're doing. Um, we also liaise with all the other local organisations like the community councils. And the Amsui wind farm is, is an Inverary based wind farm, but because a lot of our children come from Inverary, that was the reason for funding us. So again, when we were talking earlier about whether the grant should be regional or, or local, you know, there is an argument certainly for regions for communities to join together. <coughs> I mean, personally, I would say as long as that doesn't get it, make it too big, but working with Inverary has been good, and you know, we're more than happy to work with the other communities that we serve. Um, in terms of what we've achieved, one I think one of our biggest achievements, this is a community care here, local bingo night, is that we worked with alongside the hall to make it to make the hall work not just as a as a childcare centre but as a community centre, which means we have to clear everything up all the time. But it means that we put on our fundraising events are always based in the community, and the Clack and Flats Flats Wings Bar Trust usually gives us money to put on events that we can then use to fundraise. So that's a kind of win-win because what they're doing is giving the community an event, allowing us to raise funds and promoting the hall at the same time. Um, in terms of what we've learned, uh, I would say that what I was saying before about connecting communities and going step by step and building on experience, being patient, it can save a long time. Um, you've got to be in there for the long term. And also, you know, community con consultation, every time a family comes around there, we say you've got to communicate and we go, oh God, not again. You know, how many times do we have to ask people the same questions? And it, it obviously is very important, and I think going forward, having a community development plan is a huge help. And we're just in the stages of doing that now. But you also have to come to a point where somebody has to make decisions, and you have to find a way of doing that so that decisions are made, so things aren't held up indefinitely. Um, I think in Cairn too we're great believers in, in, in getting things done on the ground um, and sometimes that means you just have to push things through a bit as long as you've got enough support behind you and it'll, it'll work. Um, developing people, again like there's been a southern experience, the more people get confidence the more they develop and the more you'll succeed. Um, building on the success and, and learning from failure but and keeping the open to new ideas, new opportunities like the last speaker was flexed today. How do we know we're achieving our aims? We ask people, we balance our books every year, um, and we've still got kids in the coming year, and we've still got staff, so we're doing what we set out to do. Uh, in terms of future plans, we're now about to embark, we've really outgrown the hall, um, and we always said when we went into the hall, we'd only be there for a few years, while well, we've now been there nearly 10 years, so it's time to move on. So we've got a major project to try and build a purpose built building, which again, again is about building confidence. Now we have the confidence to do that. Uh, we're working with an organization called Community Links in Clive Bank, and I think that's an important lesson that when you, when you get to a level when you need more support than, the, than your volunteers have, or skills, or time, then you know, look for other people who can help you and get the funds 
to use them to help you, and you get you get where you want to be a lot quicker. Um, we couldn't really do this. This is a major project, which we couldn't really do with, with our volunteer committee without some outside help. But we managed to source funds through Leader and through the lottery to do that, and that's uh, getting us on our way. And that we will be able to give the hall back to the community, having built them a mark quite a sizable fund to help them survive through the next years, and on we go. So I think I have to finish up there. Um, but uh, thank you for your time, and uh, if, you have, if anybody needs child going there, do know where we are. Okay. Thank you.